Hello Internet 51 Nappa here, or hello every pony Apollo here. Uh, I'm feeling a little bit better now that I got some coffee down. So let's get started here. Uh, re uh, there are a couple cars that are going to come in later on. One's going to be a flat car. I think about that length. And then another one's going to be another van. Let's start with the uh, freight cars first. Um, and points to anyone, I'll explain in a minute. Uh, why it's arranged the way it is. That's a uh, made in England Arnold Sands freight car. This would be considered, depending on where you are, this would have been a Southern Railway CCT closed carriage. But someone pointed out to me a couple weeks ago when I first ran this that the roof is way too big. And now that I think about it, it looks like a barn on wheels. Supposed to be a Thomas and Friends green mail car, but it just looks weird. Uh, let's see, I'm gonna try a different angle for a second. Let's try over here. And this might work. Uh, got a blue van here. Let me pull them along. Uh, if you look closely at this corner here, let me zoom in. You see that NWR? From what I remember, there is an actual NWR, Northwestern Railway. But, in terms of Thomas and Friends, that's what the railway was actually called, was the Northwestern Railway. You had LNER, you had LMS, and I'll explain those in a minute. So let's bring them forward. So here's two uh, coal cars. Um, the coal loads can actually be pulled out relatively easily. I'm not going to do it on camera, though. Well, maybe I can. Nah, I can't do it on camera. Wish I could, though. So I got two coal cars here, then I have Tidmouth Milk, Sodor Fruit and Vegetable, another one of those um, Arnold Sands. If anyone can figure out what the heck Light and Buzzard means, I have no idea what that means. Uh, this is Sodor Oil, and I like how that oil splash it looks like a crown. And then you have this 20 ton North London Northeastern brake van. We switch that E to a W, you get Northwestern. Uh, the reason why it's arranged like this right now is actually it's a uh, reference to the old Thomas and Friends episode, Thomas and the Trucks. Uh, just as a little reminder, there's uh, just as a little heads up actually, that there is the Flying Scotsman and Santa Fe 3751. I'll get to them in a minute. But. In Thomas and Friends, in Thomas and the Trucks, it was this car, then the big uh, van, then you had a small van, and then behind it were mainly these two kinds of cars. But I remember seeing at the beginning of the episode there was a van where that soda or fruit and vegetable van is. That was actually right in front of the brake van, but because I don't have enough of the t standard freight cars, like these coal cars here, um, I got a little bit creative with it, and with that flatbed coming in, that's going to be really cool, too. But anywho, I'm going to push these uh, freight cars back, and I'm going to talk about the locomotive. This is the LNER 4472 Flying Scotsman. It's a little hard to see. There we go. Yeah, it's the I got the Flying Scotsman, and I was going to get a video of it a couple weeks ago, Sadly, I wasn't able to, and this week I wasn't able to because I had to work on Wednesday. But, at the same time, um, I'm really happy to get this. I just wish I had a little bit of stuff uh, for DCC here at home. I don't have it yet, but hopefully I will. Um, what, this right here, this is what I use to actually help, um, you know, oil up all the joints in the Flying Scotsman. I might do that for the Santa Fe 3751. You've seen him in recent videos. I was finally able to get the headlight working. It was a CV gl uh, glitch in there and everything works fine. I had to recode it It could because other club members had the number here. I recoded it to 3764 and it runs like it runs like clockwork. It's really good. Back to this guy though. This is Hornby. Um, it does have DCC, the sound, the chip is actually right about here, the motor is here, so we had to feed the wires from here, 
past the motor we had to kind of keep it down to where the motor wouldn't chew up the wires and you see that big bundle of wire, wires right here what I'm gonna do is up in the cab area I'm gonna actually tape the speaker right where my finger is right here to where the sounds coming out into this uh, area near the cab which would make more sense because if you look there's a piece of tape right here that's where it's sitting right now. It's basically floating above the wheels right here. I don't like that. So when I get the chance on sat next Saturday, I'm gonna tape it up here, drill a few holes up here. If I can show you. Yeah, there we go, that's good. So you see where the light is hitting, the sunlight's hitting. I'm gonna try to drill a few holes up here, maybe like in an arch, but if I have to, I'll do it in a circle where the sound can come out much better because it's really muffled in here. There's no real way for the sound to come out. It's kind of bouncing around inside the tender. Um, one other little thing that I kind of like is that that wheel right there doesn't have a flange on it, like the big drive wheels. That's only because this doesn't, this doesn't really articulate, but it helps it get through the corners a lot easier. You'll still see the wheels spin. Uh, not right now, obviously, but you'll still see it spin, which I like. Um, this is ba the Flying Scotsman in this case is an A1, not an A3. I believe A3s, they had a double chimney, and they also had those, uh, smoke deflectors. Oh yeah, and back there, that says Euro Disney. That was before Disneyland Paris, uh, changed its name. I've wanted to live in France for a while. Just a little side note. But let's talk about these guys back here. Now, I don't have enough room on the track right now because it's basically this is like a test track or whatever. But I might as well talk about it. And this one here called Aries. It's a Pullman coach. What makes it interesting is that if you look here, it's got a knuckle couple, unlike the tension lock couple that Scotsman has. So I'm gonna ask LNER44 to see if he can fix that uh, in the near future. Here is the, whoops, sorry about that. <laughs> I caught my camera as it was about to fall off the table. Uh, this, and I'm gonna keep that in there. Uh, this is a brake coach that I got recently. It has the tension lock coupling that I need for a Scotsman. And um, it is, it's a British railway one. And if I, I looked a little closely inside there, it doesn't look like there's anything in there, but there's actually seating in there. And then you can also see the word guard right here and I'm guessing what that means is the rest of this here is like maybe baggage or where the guards quarters are I don't know um, there's probably someone out there that'll let me know and then here's this one this one's called Cygnus um, one thing that I really like it's a little hard to see but there we go this guy's actually got white wall wheels you know like with cars it's white wall tires it's got white wall wheels. I think this little window right here is for the bathroom on the coach or, you know, lavatory, the lavatory or lava tree, wherever you're from. Um, I like the fact that you have little lamps in there. I just wish they were functional. But at the same, and, uh, at the same time, you know, it's nice that there's a little bit of stuff going on inside these coaches. But yeah, that's a little update on my model railroading status. I have new freight cars, I have new coaches, and I have a new locomotive. Um, I tried, I, what I did is I bought them in small groups. I didn't buy it all at once. Um, which, you know, it, it depended on how much it was, but it saved me a lot of money. Um, and I can't wait to run this guy next Saturday and show you guys on, on YouTube. Uh, where it can go, what it can do. Uh, one thing that it, this guy actually doesn't have is traction wheels. If I bring over the 3751, the fourth wheel always has the traction wheel. Uh, there's a little ring of rubber. I can feel it on my finger. Uh, Scotsman here doesn't have any traction wheels, but then, but then again, all these freight cars and coaches, they're practically weightless. So I'm just letting you know what's going on in the world of model railroading on my channel. Uh, also, LNER44, um, let's just say that he's not the only one that's got some uh, international stuff. Uh, go check out his videos. He's got a Jinty, a little uh, tank switcher, but to me that's the equivalent of Thomas the Tank Engine. 
But anywho, this video has gone on a little bit longer than I thought it would. But I was just excited to get all this stuff. Um, and it's ready to roll. So, next time I'm on, on the club layout, like you've seen in the past, you might see this, uh, the Flying Scotsman out and running. See you then. Or in the next video. Bye.